All right, well, welcome to today's video. It is definitely something that I usually do not do for my YouTube channel, but with hunting and fishing still being closed here in the state of Washington, um, you can't really do anything else. So in this video, I'm gonna be answering some questions that my Instagram followers want to know. About a week and a half ago, I made a sticker on Instagram for them to ask whatever they wanna ask, and I would try my best to address as many as I can in this video. Along with those questions, I had some stuff that I ordered and they arrived right on time. So I figured why not, you know, unbox and answer some questions at the same time. So uh, this is a package from Midway USA. So let me move this. This right here is a package from Midway USA and this package right here is from Browning. I'm gonna pull out my phone because I do have the specific questions I chose out saved. So I got a lot of questions, but there was no way I was gonna be able to answer all of them, especially in one video. So I just chose some questions that I feel like you guys would be most interested in. Let's just start out with the unboxing and then uh, we'll we'll get to answering some questions. So again, this is from Browning. This is something that I actually need for my next trip up to the mountains. So inside of this box, there's another box. <laughs> So this is just my sales receipt and I'll just pull out everything that I ordered from Browning. Let's take off all the plastic and there we go. So this is what I ordered from Browning. This right here is a trail cam. This is the Browning Strikeforce Apex. This is definitely the most expensive trail cam I've bought, given that this is only my fourth trail cam that I've ever bought in my life. So I don't have a lot of trail cams, but uh, I decided to go a little bit more expensive on this one because I really need a camera to work at this particular spot that I plan to hunt. So I just decided to spend the extra money on a camera that's going to be more reliable, take higher quality images and whatnot, and all that stuff. So this is the Browning Strike Force Apex. And then along with it, since this is expensive, I did go ahead and buy a trail cam security box to go over this one. And then I just decided to buy some batteries. This is awesome from Browning, it was like five bucks. So so this right here is basically a combination. Just gonna throw my batteries into this, this trail cam and then put it inside of a bear box. But you might be wondering, where's the SD card? I, I actually already have an SD card back at home, so I didn't need to buy another one. So that right there is what I bought for the first one. So with that being said, is it in view? Let's move it like this. So with that there, let's get to answering some questions. So the first question comes from Andrew, and he says, do you think turkey season will happen? So I asked this question before turkey season actually got closed, but there is a chance that fishing game is gonna open up turkey season in May. So let's just address this question in context to whether or not they're gonna open up turkey season in May. So with the way things are going right now, I don't think we're gonna even see a spring turkey season here in Washington. Um, although I would like to be proven wrong, I would obviously like to see a spring turkey season this year. Realistically, I don't think we're gonna see a spring turkey season here in Washington, but optimistically, Yes, I hope they open it up in May because that would just be awesome. So fingers crossed, but we'll just have to wait and see. So the next question comes from Sydney and she says, do you ever fish on Lake Roosevelt? Uh, yes, I have fished on Lake Roosevelt quite a bit actually. Um, I actually never grew up fishing Lake Roosevelt or the Columbia River. I grew up fishing the Pend Oreille River, the Snake River and just local lakes. But in 2017, when they opened up sturgeon fishing on Lake Roosevelt, that's when we started exploring more and more on the Lake Roosevelt side of things. And, you know, I've slowly expanded what I've targeted. So on Lake Roosevelt specifically, I've targeted walleye, burbot, white sturgeon, smallmouth bass, and 
rainbow trout so far. Although I do plan to start exploring more of Lake Roosevelt and trying to go after more species. Uh, the next question comes from Fisherman Fever. Are you Hmong green or Hmong white? For those of you who don't know what that means, um, when it comes to the Hmong language itself, there's actually two sub languages in a way. So there's the white version of the language and then there's the green version of the language. I don't know why it's differentiated by color, but it just is. So to make it easier for you to understand, just think of it as American English and British English. They're both still English, but they have their differences in terms of vocabulary and accents. And that's basically the same concept when you're talking about Hmong green and Hmong white. They're both Hmong, but there's some vocabulary differences and there's also a difference in accent. But to answer your question, I am Hmong white. So the next question comes from Sam and he says, are you going to come over to the west side to hunt blacktail or Roosevelt elk? So hunting both blacktail and Roosevelt elk is actually on the to-do list, but as of right now, I don't have a definitive plan to go after either, um, at least not for 2020. But the thing is, I'm not even done planning my 2020 fall hunting season, so who knows? I'm, I might end up on the west side this season, although there's a very, very small chance that that's gonna happen. But absolutely, uh, Roosevelt elk and blacktail deer, they're definitely on my bucket list. I just don't know the exact time uh, when I'm gonna be able to basically go after them. So hopefully that answers those questions, but since we got through four questions, let's dig into this big box right here. I'm not gonna show you guys everything just yet. I apologize if I look really low, but my seat's really low and I don't want to stand up because I think I'm going to go out of frame. But these are just some, these are just some air pouches. All right, so this right here, again, it's from Midway USA. This is just a waterproof Plano tackle box. I felt like I needed more tackle boxes for organizing my fishing tackle. So I went ahead and bought a waterproof Plano. This is the 3700 series, which is pretty big and it's the deep one. So it's deeper so you can store more stuff in it. And this right here is just a good pack of yum dingers. This is the watermelon color with red flakes. This is by far my favorite color and my favorite worm when it comes to using stuff for like the wacky rig or the Texas rig or the Ned rig. I ran out, so decided to just pick one up. And then these right here are also from Yum. And these are the three inch grubs. So this is a chartreuse and this is the silver flake one. And these are two things that I wanna try and use for walleye fishing because walleye fishing is something that I really wanna get good at or at least proficient at so I'm slowly building my walleye tackle box and I figured these grubs right here should be a good place to start so yeah there it is just some soft plastics from yum and a good old waterproof Plano tackle box and we'll leave that right there and let's get back to answering some questions the next question comes from Jace Drop and he says when did you start hunting fishing that's actually a good question and it's actually a pretty simple answer. So I grew up in a family that was and still is very big into hunting and fishing. So um, I was introduced to both hunting and fishing at a very, very young age. It's just always been part of my life. So I've never really gone through a time where I never fished or hunted in my life. And I think that's a big part as to why this whole quarantine thing with no fishing and no hunting makes me feel like somebody just ripped off one of my arms because it it's really a big part of who I am and also who my family is. But in terms of getting my actual hunter education license, that was in July of 2009. And so 2009 was the years where I could um, start carrying my own gun and start hunting. Uh, the next question before we go back to some unboxing comes from Ruben and he says what is your dream hunt my dream hunt is alaskan doll sheep i don't know what it is about doll sheep 
but something about them is just very admirable to me and aside from the animal itself i just have deep admirations for the country they live in a lot of it has to do with just watching youtube videos i've never seen it in person but just seeing people on alaskan doll sheep hunts in the country that they hunt in the country that doll sheep live in like something like that is just very intriguing to me number one on the list is alaskan doll sheep so let's put my phone aside and let's look into what's in here all right so these things are just more fishing stuff so these are the gamagatsu jig heads and these are basically the jig heads that i'm gonna use with these young plastics that i talked about earlier and then along with wanting to get more into walleye fishing another one that i feel like i don't target enough is just channel catfish so i'm gonna slowly start targeting channel catfish more and more especially this year and so i just went ahead and bought some gamagatsu circle hooks and these are the six aught size and these are the barbed uh, circle hooks so definitely big cat circle channel catfish that's on the to-do list for this year and just along with that i just bought a cheap eagle claw stringer because i broke my stringer last time i went trout fishing so just needed something cheap to replace it um, that's pretty much all the fishing stuff the next thing i bought is this thing right here this is the lyman electronic digital trigger pull gauge and this thing right here is for my rifles so this basically measures how strong the trigger is before it breaks and it fires your bullet in your rifle or handgun or shotgun or anything firearms related and so in the past i've used like the the non-digital ones where it's just read on a scale but i feel like that's not very accurate so i went ahead and pulled the trigger no pun intended went ahead and pulled the trigger on this trigger pull gauge right here it's like 40 bucks but i think it'll be very handy especially since this year i have a 6.5 creamer project to build and i plan to film a video on that too so yeah i just wanted to add some stuff to my arsenal so that is the lyman trigger pull gauge so question number eight comes from mason and perfect timing because it has to do with my firearms it says what loads do you shoot out of your 30 odd six and so right now i don't have any reloading kit i actually shoot factory ammunition and for my browning expo 30 odd six for last year for the 2019 hunting season i was shooting the hornady precision hunter and i was shooting the 178 grain eldx out of my 30 odd six and that is still actually what i'm shooting although i don't know if i'm gonna even shoot that gun this year as long as my 6.5 creamer build goes according to plan because if i can't get the 6.5 creamer to shoot then i'll then i'll have to resort back to my 30 odd six yeah even for my 6.5 creamer i do plan to stick to the hornady precision hunter the eldx versions and uh, i'm gonna shoot the 143 grains for my 6.5 creamer because i was a big fan of the bullet performance and the bullet accuracy out of my 30 odd six last year so hopefully the 143 eldx shoots straight for my 6.5 creamer and i can just stick to the eldx but that's going off on a tangent just to answer your question i'm shooting the hornady 178 grain uh, eldx for my 30 odd six the next question comes from mr hunter new to the channel but will you ever hunt the gorge more precisely stevenson area so as of right now a lot of my research and my scouting and my hunting revolves around northeast washington but the bigger picture is i do want to be able to explore basically washington state as a whole eventually so i'm not exactly sure when i'll get to the gorge or the stevenson area in particular i don't have a definitive yes or no answer for that question but i'm just going to be hopeful and say yeah hopefully i'll be able to hunt down there sometime whether it be for deer or maybe even bighorn sheep the next question comes from smitty and he wants to know do you hope to have your own tv show one day or just stay smaller so right now i have no desire to start a tv show um, i personally like the freedom on youtube basically on youtube you're a lot more flexible on how you want to show your hunting and fishing videos i'm not saying that tv shows are bad i think there are some great tv shows out there but correct me if i'm wrong 
but I think the majority of people that subscribe to this channel subscribe to it because it's not a TV show. I think a lot more people are starting to appreciate the raw footage rather than some of the overly edited footage that you see on TV. So as of right now, I just plan to stick to YouTube and I don't ever think I'm going to go on a TV show, but zero desire to start a TV show. These are basically the last things before the last last item. And so it's just something short. Um, this is just a shirt from Vortex Optics, just a shirt to represent Vortex. And then this right here, it's the Loctite 242 glue. And this is also gonna go for my rifle stuff. And it's just something I needed. So just a quick unboxing there, just a Vortex shirt and a Loctite glue that I need for my rifle. The next question comes from Eric and he wants to know how do you hunt in the rain? Um, that's actually a very broad question. Different conditions require different things. So you have to gauge how hard is it raining? Is it like straight down pouring or is it just like a sprinkle? Or is it raining in the spring or is it raining in August or is it raining in November or December? So you kind of have to be very specific in terms of like the context because different times of the season and the severity of the rainstorm itself will determine largely of what I decide to do. So in a very general context, just have rain gear, just have your rain jacket, um, your rain pants, maybe a pack rain cover and gaiters. Gaiters is something I always pack with me if it's raining or snow or any of the conditions has to do with anything that's gonna be wet. That's a very big question for me to cover in a short period of time, but if you have questions, feel free to PM me and we can discuss more about it. The next question comes from Opportunistic Outdoors and they basically want to know my thoughts on public lands being closed. So when you talk about public lands, in these situations you have to be pretty specific on what you mean by public lands because not all public lands are closed here in Washington. Uh, although there's a good portion of public lands that are, that are closed. So for example, Colville National Forest, that is still open to the public. Although the recreational sites are closed, you can still go into the like like the forest basically and go hike around shed hunt and stuff like that so that's just kind of something that i feel like a lot of people don't realize is when people talk about public land there's all sorts of public land there's state land there's national forest there's blm and there's land that's owned by private timber companies but they allow for the public to access and so i'm just saying like you got to be careful uh, as to what you mean when you say public lands. But in terms of your question, since you're talking about public lands being closed, I'm just gonna assume that you're talking about the state lands that are actually closed right now. And my thoughts on it right now is I am definitely bummed about it and I'm not a fan of the decision, but I do wanna say this. I do understand why they closed it and I do understand the severity of COVID-19 and I'm not trying to demean it by any means. I just don't think that public lands being closed is necessarily the most effective way to slow this thing down but I can understand how it helps this whole situation and so this whole thing right here is just an iffy situation it's just unfortunate right now but you know hopefully that this thing will get better and we can all go back to our normal lives and whatnot so that's basically my thoughts on it it's not anything special but I just wanted to clarify that public lands is just not public land there's actually if you draw a tree there's public lands at the top and then if you go down there's a bunch of different public lands and although some of the public lands are closed there are still a good number of public lands that are still open for the public like Colville National Forest and uh, some other national forests. I think the Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest is also open to the public although again like BLM and state land like the Washington DNR stuff like that although those are closed some national forces are still open and so you're not entirely stuck at home although I do encourage you guys to practice safe physical distancing and stuff like that I don't know if that made much sense but hopefully it did so the next question comes from my cousin and she wants to know what inspired you to pursue what you're doing now like your hunting and fishing adventures um, that's a big question and the short answer is all of this started out by simply just loving to hunt and fish and it still is regardless if I have this YouTube channel or not or these cameras I'd still be hunting and fishing because I simply love to do it 
it's one of those things where I never really thought I would make something out of it, but it's gotten to the point where, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities that arise from it. And so if there's opportunities that arise from something you love to do, why not take advantage of those opportunities? The short answer is I'm pursuing hunting and fishing because I love to do it. With that being said, let's look into the last thing I have in this box. Well, that was a fail. I didn't think this was gonna be that heavy. Throw that down there. And let's move this aside. This is the last thing that I bought from Midway USA. And this is a gun vise because I needed it. If you don't know what a gun vise is, it's basically the platform that you put your rifle on. That way you can mount your scope and basically do gun mechanics on it. Up until this point, before I bought this, we were just kind of old school and we would just, you know, place our rifles on whatever platform we can. With how much we tinker around with our firearms, I figured why not get something that's just gonna make your life a lot easier. So again, back to, these two things right here where I bought specifically for my 6.5 Creamer project coming up. Might as well get this too and just make my project a whole lot easier on myself. This is the Tipton gun vise. This is the cheapest one I believe. But again, I just needed something to hold my rifle. That way I can mount my scope and whatnot. So if you guys like this type of video and you guys want me to continue to do it outside of this quarantine thing, leave a comment and let me know. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys next time, which I should be back up in the mountains.